Good morning, everyone. Welcome along to this morning's BCP Planning Committee. I'm Councillor Kelsey and I'll be chairing the meeting this morning. Uh, first thing to do is to pass over to Democratic Services, who will deal with housekeeping. Thank you, Chairman. Please note this meeting of the Planning Committee is being recorded by the Council for live broadcast and will be published on the Council website for a minimum of six months. The meeting may also be recorded or streamed for live or subsequent broadcast by members of the public, although ultimate discretion in this matter lies with the Chairman in case of disruption. Please could everyone present follow these ground rules. Only speak when invited to by the Chairman. Please use the microphones on your desk when speaking and please remember to turn them off when you are finished. If accessing the meeting via Microsoft Teams, please turn on your video function when invited to speak. Again, if you are accessing via Teams and would like to speak on an item, please do so by using the raise your hand feature in the bar at the top of the Teams window. When voting on a move, the chairman will call out each committee member's name in roll call style and will ask the member to respond with a vote for, against or abstain. For those in the room, if the fire alarm sounds, please exit the building by way of the nearest available signed fire exit route and make your way to the assembly point under the Bradley Road flyover. Finally, please ensure background noise is kept to a minimum and mobile phones and other devices are turned off or switched to silent for the duration of the meeting. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jill. Um, committee members with us this morning are myself, Councillor Kelsey, uh, Councillor Toby Johnson, Councillor Steve Barron, Councillor Derek Balthwick, Councillor Mike Brook, Councillor Simon Bull, Councillor Malcolm Davies, Councillor Peter Hall, Councillor Paul Hilliard, Councillor Marion Lepedevin, Councillor Tony O'Neill, and Councillor Felicity Rice, who has not arrived at this moment in time, but may well step in very shortly. We also have a selection of officers in the room with us. We have Nick Perrins, who is a development management manager, um, David Hodges, who is online, Sophie Birch, we have Rob Firth, who is legal, and we have Sam Fox, who is head of planning. I will now move on to the agenda for this meeting. And first item is apologies, please, Jill. Thank you, Chairman. Apologies have been received from councillors George Farquhar, Robert Lawton, Simon McCormack, and Tony Trent. And item two, councillor Mike Brook is substituting for councillor Trent today. Thank you very much. Declarations of interest, members. Do members have declarations of interest on any of today's items? Councillor Brook. Fine, thank you, Chair. Um, 43 Ashwood Drive, um, predetermination. Uh, when that starts, I shall move into the public gallery and await my turn as ward council. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Barron. Thank you, Chairman. Item A, Glenmount Drive, number eight. I've had too many discussions with the objectors to not vote without bias on, on this, so I won't take part in the vote, but if it's OK with you, Chairman, I can say a few, few words as the ward councillor. And then a, a similar scenario with, with C, uh, 28 Harbourview Road. I was initially to call in the application by a concerned neighbour. The plans were amended to, to put a paid glass in which satisfied that complaint. I then removed the, I withdrew the red card and I was asked by another neighbour to then submit another red card with the reasons that I've given on, on, on my calling form. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm indifferent about that application, but I just feel a bit uncomfortable sitting on it, so I'll, I'll, I'll bring myself to the public gallery for that. I'll vote on that item. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Mayor. Uh, just to give Councillor Rice a second. Yeah. No, so you have, do you have any declarations of interest, Councillor Rice? You don't. Okay, thank you very much. In that case, we'll move on to item six, the schedule of planning applications, and we have four applications listed today. Ah, sorry. First thing for me to do is confirmation of minutes. Do members agree to me signing two previous sets of minutes? Great. Thank you very much. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. On um, where is it now? On, on the, there's a specification for the, for the tree, and I actually said is a tilio padata a, a pleached lime tree, or the spalier pleached lime tree. So we just add that because the gardens aren't big enough to let them just go crazy. If you want to, you know, I suggest that there's a screen. Not as a spread, spreading tree. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. Thank you. Frank, could you just spell it? Pleach? Right, uh, P L E A C H E D, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll take it as red. Okay, thank you very much. 
So members, before we move on, we do have four items listed, but I do have to ask members permission to defer the first item. This is um, for reasons that have been made known to everybody concerned in this application and the officer's recommend recommendation now is to defer this item. Do members agree to defer this item? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you very much. So thank you for coming along and thank you for your agreement on this one as well. It's much appreciated. So members, we will now move on to the next item on the agenda, which is item 6B. And I believe, Councillor Brooke, you're going to retire on this one. So 48 Ashwood Drive in Poole. And I would ask Dominica if you could present your case, please. Yeah, please do, Mr Perrins, firstly. Thank you, Chair. Um, committee's officers have been made aware there's been a late submission by the applicant's agent, which appears to contain some new information. And officers have limited time to consider this, but could potentially offer some observations on it. However, third parties haven't probably seen the document, but as the recommendation is of refusal anyway, the members will manage to agree with the officer view. It seems unlikely there'd be any prejudice by carrying on with the item, so we suggest we carry on. However, if having considered the item, members were inclined to not accept the officer's recommendation, then the committee may want to defer the item to, to allow further consideration of the additional information and allow third parties to comment on it. So just to highlight, they, we are aware of the new information has come in. Officers could probably provide some observations, but if the recommendation were to change, then I, I suggest the committee would need to pause at that stage and think about whether we need to defer the item. Thank you for that, Mr. Perrin. much appreciated. So, Dominica, over to yourself. We have somebody on screen that doesn't need to be there. Sorry, Chairman, I think it's the speaker for Nude Gardens. If you could just turn your camera off, please. You're welcome to stay on the call until your item, but if you could just turn your camera off. Thank you. Yeah. Could all members or all persons not on the call at this moment in time please turn their cameras off? Yeah. <laughs> Dominica, are you ready for us to present your case, please? Please bear with us while we uh, try and <laughs> locate Dominica. <laughs> Do apologise for this, uh, members of the public. I think it possibly because we've deferred the first item, Dominica was probably not quite ready to present her case on this one. So we'll just give her a minute or two to sort herself out. Thank you. We should be able to. Yeah. Yeah, members, I'm just going to adjourn for a couple of minutes just while we try and sort this technical hitch out. OK, it won't be too long.
Okay. So yeah, carry on, Dominica. Thank you. Uh, Chairman Committee, the application is to remodel and refurbish the um, existing dwelling. To extend it, um, Alta is also the construction of the touch single story double garage proposed, new boundary treatment and a gate at 43 Ashwood Drive. The site is located to the southeast of Ashwood Drive. It's occupied by detached L shaped bungalow. On the block plan, we can see the extension proposed to the front and rear, the um, double garage to the front of the site, and the boundary um, gates to the side to the front. That's the site visible from the road, from the junction, with the main part of Ashwood Drive. Um, the alteration is very modern in design. It's flat roof. The ridge line would be raised by approximately one meter. Flat um, to the front is a single story part, flat roof as well proposed. Uh, the, the garage, the existing garage would be converted into games room and the lounge. And again, single stories, uh, front and rear um, extensions visible on the floor plan. Oh. Um. First floor. In terms of neighboring amenity, it is considered that uh, the separation distance from the application dwelling to the neighbors is sufficient to not cause any harmful shadowing, loss of sunlight or daylight, loss of outlook. It also won't appear overbearing for the neighbors. In terms of neighboring privacy, the views from the um, windows proposed on the ground floor would be obstructed by the existing boundary treatments. Um, windows, first floor windows proposed to the west would face um, drive towards the driveway of number 45 and front garden of number 47. First floor windows proposed to the east would face towards the application rear garden and have some oblique views over the gardens of the neighbors. However, it is acceptable in urban location like this one. And first floor window to the south would face towards the uh, bedroom window of number 45. And if the application was approved, the condition should be imposed to install this window, obscure glaze and fi fix shut up to 1.7 meters from the finished floor level. Um, uh, number of bedrooms would be increased and the parking sp space within the existing garage would be lost. However, the proposed um, on-site parking provision would be sufficient to uh, for the extended dwelling. The site is um, covered by the tree preservation order and tree protection plan has not been submitted. Uh, however, tree officer saw the site, commented on it, and um, he stated that trees, protected trees to the rear are at sufficient distance to not be harmed by the development nor by construction. One tree to the front of the site is visible as a um, red circle on the garage for floor plan. Um, would be lost due to position of the uh, due to location of the proposed garage. And again, if application was approved, um, replanting should be uh, conditioned. That's the front elevation that would, would be visible from the road. Um, as I mentioned before, um, contemporary and design. Um, house and the, the, the dwelling ended in the garage. The pre-application pre advice has been given last year and there was advice that although the alteration is would be acceptable, the pitch, pitch roof should be proposed over the house and the garage to preserve um, character and appearance of the area. Again, that's that's how the house looks like from the road. There is some vegetation to the front of the site. However, it is not of importance to control its retention. Street scene is characterized by detached houses and bungalows with pitched roofs, traditional in design and pitch roofs. And there is only one example at number 57. It's to the south of the application site. It's at the last end 
of the cul-de-sac and it's screened by the vegetation growing to the front of the site. And uh, the, the, the dwelling is sited on the lower level than the road is. Uh, therefore, although the amenities and privacy of the neighbors would be preserved, uh, contemporary design is considered to not preserve prevailing pattern of development in the area and therefore the application is recommended for refusal. Thank you very much, Dominica. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, we have a statement of objection from Christine Santani, which I will read out. I am the owner of 45 Ashwood Drive, Broadstone, Dorset, BH188LN. I received a letter last Friday relating to a proposed development next door to me at 43 Ashwood Drive, Broadstone, BH188LN. I note that this matter is due to be considered by the Planning Committee at its meeting on Thursday. I understand that the process of the Planning the committee allows third parties to issue representations to the committee members for their consideration ahead of the meeting. I do not feel I have had an adequate period of time to consider the application or to engage and obtain professional assistance to make a representation on my behalf to the committee in this matter. However, my opinion is as follows. I fully support the planning officer's detailed assessment that the scheme should be refused on design grounds. The character and appearance of Ashwood Drive is one of detached buildings which are predominantly older style dwellings with pitched roofs. That is a strong architectural feature that is evident throughout. The proposed two-storey flat roof and its contemporary vernacular is wholly out of character and will be detrimental to the visual amenities of Ashwood Drive. As such, the proposed development is contrary to policy PP27 of the full local plan. In respect to the relationship to my own property, I am deeply concerned that the proposed extension over and beyond the existing garage will cause an overbearing effect and harm my reasonable amenities. It is clear from the proposed side elevation is bland and being only 2.5 metres from the boundary shall be visually intrusive. I would ask that this adverse impact is cited as a reason for refusal. Overall, the design of the structure is wholly out of character with the Ashwood Drive area. And given that this is an extension to an existing dwelling and not the erection of a new dwelling, planning policy requires that any extension to be a sympathetic one. In my humble opinion, as a resident, this fails to meet that threshold. I strongly urge members to refuse this application on the grounds cited in your officer's report, but also having regard to the overbearing relationship that the structure would have to my own property. I would be happy to support a future application of a development in keeping with the Ashwood Drive area and in character with the other four properties in the cul-de-sac, which are all bungalows. Yours faithfully, Christine Samtani. Uh, there are speakers in support of the application. Claire Spiller and Michael Westbrook are, are attending. Would you like to come forward? Thank you. The recommendation for refusal of this application appears to hang on one issue only, the proposed contemporary roof design of the house and garage. Everything else is acceptable to the planning officer, and both local councillors are in support. If residents of Ashwood Drive had found the application to be so alien, we would have expected lots of other objections, and there's only one objector. My son and daughter-in-law sought pre-app advice, and they noted and respected the planning officer's opinion. However, the officer's recommendation of a pitched roof, they felt, would dominate and lose the important backdrop of trees to the street scene. Being set back in a coldy sack and at a sunken level, opting for a flat roof maintains that important backdrop. A flat roof garage was also chosen, as this will be hidden behind the tall existing boundary hedge. The family also chose to use timber to the first floor elevations to blend into the silver and backdrop. Ashwood Drive has already set a precedent with the approval of a flat roof to number 57 in 2018. The vast array of varied roof designs makes the argument against the contemporary roof difficult to understand. Portstone's neighbourhood plan states that the number of families have decreased over the last 20 years and there's still a significant need for additional larger properties to meet the demand from the inward migration of young professional families. Without this, there could be significant negative impacts upon the provision of health services, schools and shops. 
My two grandsons both work and have apprenticeships in the area. My son and daughter-in-law work from home. My two granddaughters are still in secondary education. We were disappointed the planning officer's report didn't mention the environmental opportunities of this application. We are acutely aware of the impacts on the environment, the poorly insulated, inefficiently heated and outdated 1980s bungalow. Therefore, we've granted the family intent to look at up-to-date, eco-friendly building materials with the prospect of installing solar panels and a ground source heat pump if possible. This application hinges on two questions. What's the harm of a contemporary flat roof and what do you gain from a pitched roof? Planning is subjective and this council has a good reputation for being different and sufficiently able to change. Just drive around Paul to see the juxtaposition of many homes, pitched roof and contemporary, happily sitting side by side. Thank you for your time. We hope you can support this application. Thank you for the opportunity to address this committee. The committee. If you've visited the site in Ashwood Drive, you'll have seen that this is one of those roads that has a diverse range of architectural styles of dwellings, including the roof forms. There are asymmetric roofs, there's steep roofs, shallow roofs, and almost um, two storeys with a roof sloping down behind. They are all sat juxtaposed to each other. The character of this road is that there is no uniformity in the design of the dwellings. The character of this road is more about dwellings being nestled within a tree landscape. The site and Ashwood Drive isn't within a conservation area. The site is sat within a small cul-de-sac of Ashwood Drive, which is a no-through road. There are only fleeting views of this site and its neighbours when travelling past this cul-de-sac entrance along Ashwood Drive. Sorry, Ashwood Drive. When stood outside the site, the ridge at number 45 sits clearly higher than the existing dwelling, which again demonstrates the lack of un uniformity between dwellings. This proposed unashamedly modern extension proposes the use of timber cladding as a facing material at first floor level, which will soften the visual appearance of the dwelling and it would sit comfortably within the site and to its neighbours. The relatively small increase in the ridge height ensures that the backdrop of trees is retained in views from Ashwood Drive and a sensitive use of timber cladding ensure that this proposal will blend within the backdrop of the trees. It will not be a prominent building. Whilst the garage sits forward of the dwelling, being flat roofed, it significantly reduces the scale and bulk of the garage. This garage, like the dwelling, would also be finished in timber cladding, which again enables the garage to sit subserviently within its plot. The case officer raises no objection to the gates, which would partially screen the proposed garage, as would the existing landscaping, which is proposed to be retained. We consider the, this con carefully conceived extension, resulting in a modern contemporary family home, would make a positive contribution to the character of Ashwood Drive, and it would comply with policies PP27 of your local plan and BP08 of the Broadstone Neighbourhood Plan. I respectfully encourage you to debate this issue and determine the application favourably. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Mike Brook, please. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to address the committee as Ward Councillor. The case officer has clearly identified four issues relating to this application. One, the impact on neighbouring amenity and privacy. Two, impact on parking. Three, impact on trees. And four, impact on character and appearance of the area. The overlooking and privacy issue has been addressed through the provision of obscure glazing, which can be conditioned. And the parking provision is compliant with, with the parking policies of this council and again not a problem. Protected trees will not be damaged at all, they're too distant from the uh, works and that's been sort of mentioned as well. So with the first, with three of those issues there is no significant level of harm arising from the proposed development and this leaves therefore the impact on character and appearance as the remaining issues and the question for, is therefore, is it a breach of policy PP27 and BP08? With regard to the proposed building, there are no issues stated by the case officer or the objector in relation to the materials being used. 
Therefore, one must assume these are compliant with policy and therefore acceptable. In terms of bulk, mass and being overbearing, uh, we heard the case officer say it wouldn't be overbearing. The applicant has taken this into consideration. Pre-application advice recommended a pitch roof form, but this would have significantly raised the ridge height to around two and a half metres above the current level, creating a dominant and overbearing feature, which would also have blocked out much of the woodland backdrop, which is a high value amenity feature of this area. By proposing a flat roof, that is barely a one metre increase in height, which brings it in line with the height of neighbouring properties, it is therefore not overbearing. It also allows the woodland view to be retained, which is of significant benefit. In the end, it boils down to whether or not the flat roof is acceptable. This is a self-contained residential area with very mixed and individual architectural styles from the traditional 1980s to Spanish hacienda, classical, one-storey, two-storey, three-storey detached, as well as updated contemporary dwellings within a sylvan setting. Flat roof dormers also exist. It is therefore difficult to understand why a contemporary designed flat roof building would be regarded as out of character. In fact, the precedent has already been set with the approval of a flat roof conversion at number 57, which also has three storeys as part of the design. The case officer for this application wrote, and I quote, the wide range of roof forms of the existing dwellings on Ashwood Drive is such that there can be no objection to the principle of the flat roof, which is a common feature in contemporary architecture. And goes on to state, whilst more visually apparent, the resultant dwelling will fit in well with the locality and will not appear unduly prominent within the street scene, thereby not materially harming its character and appearance. And so we come to the issue of consistency of decision making. We have two case officers recommending diametrically opposed outcomes within this relatively small residential area. And I can also give an example from Upper Golf Links Road in which an asymmetrical roof on the contemporary development has a flat roof garage in front of it. That is the only one in the street, all of which have pitched roofs and ridges and different ages. So in a way, very similar to Ashwood Drive, precedents have already been set. As the principle of a contemporary design with a flat roof has already been established as being acceptable, then the application before you should also be approved, especially when all other aspects are taken on board. It is a sustainable development in which the advantages outweigh any possible harm that might arise from the implementation of the development. I therefore urge the committee to grant this application. Thank you. For Thank you, Councillor Brook. <coughs> So, members, Councillor Bull. Thank you, Chair. It was really just to clarify a couple of the uh, emails I received about this application commented upon existing planning um, condition from, from a previous application. Is that, um, is that, does that stand? Is that, uh, I haven't actually seen the information you can sense about that issue. Dominica might have a comment if it's okay to bring Dominica in. I think she might have seen it. Dominica? Sorry, can you repeat? Because I um, didn't hear half of um, conversation. Yeah, sorry. Not have half you conversation. Been, yeah. Have you been made aware of the recent emails that have come into the planning this application? Number 57, you mean? Yeah. Uh, yes, I am. Yes, I do know what the um, previous case officer said. Uh, however, I don't think we set precedences. That's the first thing. Two, as I said, uh, it's a bit different context of number 57. The house is uh, set lower than the um, road level. And I don't believe it's exactly the same scenario here. This house, the, the application dwelling will be much more prominent, much more visible on the road. And still following policies, um, the proposal should preserve preva prevailing pattern of development, which is uh, obviously streets in as I as I show on the in my presentation, it's uh, characterized by 
more traditional houses with pitch roofs. And number 50, 57 is the only one. <coughs> I don't believe it's a prevailing pattern of development. I'm going to come back to Councillor Ball so he can carry on with his question. Councillor Ball. Thank you. Uh, if I can just read the paragraph from the letter regarding um, planning permission. It says planning permission which was granted for the construction of the property contained a condition that the property shall not be further developed to ensure the privacy to existing adjoining property. Is that uh, is that the case? Is there a condition on planning standing at the moment? Dominica? In this case, in my in my case, or number fifty seven. In your case, Dominica, I, I think Councillor Bull is saying that on the on the application for this site originally there was a condition saying that no further development could take place. Could you uh, clarify that, please? I'm not aware of that. I don't know. OK, uh, Council Wolf, Mr. Perrins is going to research that while we carry on with the debate, if that's OK. Is that OK with you? OK. Members, any further comments from anybody wishing to go? Councillor Hilliard. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Dominica, were you involved in the pre-app discussion last year? W would there have been any plans for this or a pitch roof? Uh, at this site, I gave the um, uh, pre-application advice to the applicant and that was exactly the same scenario and the only advice was was given to change that roof that contemporary design flat roof to the pitch one that was the only issue okay thank you thank you chair um for me you know it, it does all come down to the to the flat roof of the pitch roof i don't think there were any other issues that would lead this to a to a refusal i think the case officers already highlighted um highlighted that but i think we've got to remember that there's no such thing as precedent in in planning and the word's been ban bandied around a little bit so far but there, there's no such thing and for me number 57 at the top of the road and this are fundamentally different in a couple of key ways number 57 is on the main road but even more than that it's also set back behind a lot of boundary treatments and when you go there you cannot see the, the building we have seen a lot of uh, these sorts of developments, contemporary ones, moving into areas with less contemporary architecture. But in each of them, you normally see it along a, a longer road with less of a prevailing character because everything's from different areas down here. Here, you've got a very clear character. And, and more than that, the application site in and of itself is set back into its own little cul-de-sac, which to me has its own little, has its own little character all, all of its own. If this was being proposed on the main road, I might might be a little bit more uh, more sympathetic of it. But the fact that this is set back into its own little cul-de-sac means we're dealing with, I think, a different character to what's on the main road. And to me, shoving something in there into this little triplet of very very similar, you know, one one and a half story bungalows um, just just wouldn't fit. That the flat roof is, you know, I don't think any of us have a problem with flat roofs in 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 general. I really quite like the look of this design. Actually, I think it looks much better than what's than what's currently there. But it's just the wrong it's just the wrong place for it, and I don't think I could support anything but the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Any update, Mr. Perry? Councillor, for sending you the email. Um, having very quickly looked at it, I believe the so the original planning permission for the, for the dwelling before us today. Um, there was there was conditions around you know, preventing future development, a bit like taking away permitted development rights going forward. It doesn't necessarily mean somebody can't come forward later on and propose something in the future. Plans change, etc. So it's not a it's not a long term restrictive condition. Just highlighting that at the time, it was felt that that development was the extent to which we could be approved, that things do change. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean to say things can't be approved subsequently. So it's about taking away permitted development rights as we might do today, back in 1983. So it's, it's not an absolute restriction. My understanding of that, having quickly looked at it. Thank you, Mr. Parrish. Any further comments from any members? Councillor Rice? Um, it was just a comment really on sustainable building materials um, and um, uh, I would love to see um, a, a modern conversion of a, 
uh, an older building uh, using sustainable building materials um, as an exemplar for the area because we don't have very many of them. Uh, so, for example, Hemp Creek could be uh, easily in this construction, probably. Um, so, if it gets approval, that would be uh, great to see. Thank you. Councillor Bulligan. Thank you, Chair, and, and thank you, uh, Mr. Perrin, for clarifying that for me. Uh, looking at the application, and we've heard that the separation is okay, the overview of other properties is obstructed. We can have obscured glazing to the bedroom. The parking is compliant. Trees to the rear are safe and that the distance away from the works is fine. Uh, one tree loss, which is always regrettable, uh, and, the, and the property is not overbearing. So I'm struggling to see why we would refuse it. I understand it's a slightly different design to the rest in that particular part of the um, drive. drive. But there are other properties. There is there isn't a standard uh, um, design for that area, so I'm, I'm quite happy to support the application. Thank you. Thank you. Are you making a move to that effect, Councillor Bull? I'd like to hear some more debate first. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Neil. No, thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I mean it is it is quite a, a challenging interpretation this one in many ways. Um, but I'm, when it looks, when it looks at plain in uh, general, I'm increasingly concerned that the inherent character of certain areas is uh, being undermined, uh, either by apartments or contemporary design. <coughs> Paul was mentioned as an example, and I live in Paul, and there are plenty of examples of flat roof designs. However, I must, must admit, in this case, in this area, in this cul-de-sac, I do believe there is a strong inherent character that is identified. And therefore, on the basis of that local issue, I don't think I can support the application. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Councillor O'Neill. Any further comments from members? Councillor Hilliard? Yes, I, I agree. I think that the policy, and we hear about it all the time when we speak to our residents, it's about the character and yes, there's some areas where character can change. It's a, a real mix, but certainly the uh, uh, the cul-de-sac and I think the, the three uh, properties in that area would be affected. So uh, I, I move for refusal as per officer's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hilliard. And um, I would happily second your move. I like the design of the building, but I think this is a cul-de-sac. It's not the main road. And I think when it is a small cul-de-sac like this, the character of that particular cul-de-sac becomes so much more important than the rest of the street scene because you're not looking at it as one street scene. It is a totally separate area to the main part of the street. And I think uh, Councillor Johnson, the Vice Chair, made, it, made that exact point earlier. And I, I find myself fully agreeing with what he said. And I think we do have to look at the character. We're losing a lot of the character of a lot of our streets by, by these sorts small developments that are taking place but where you have this particular cul-de-sac here i think it will be totally wrong for us to go against the character of so it's been there for a long time this character and i think we need to try and preserve as much as we can and i think for that reason i'm happy to second your move councillor hillier any further comments from any members councillor Barron. thank you chairman i've got a bit I'm, I'm still sort of undecided on this i see a huge irony that the building we're in today it's an absolutely horrendous building, especially viewed from. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not bringing BCP into any disrepute there. This is former former, former council. Um, I, I like the design. Um, I'm, I'm hearing the you know the negative comments, and I respect the officer's views. I'm, I'm still I'm, I'm, I'm undecided, and I really don't like abstaining on votes. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mayor. Dominica, is there anything that you would like to come back on on? The debate that you've heard so far? No, I don't think so. Okay, thank you for that. So, members, we have no further comments from people, so we do have a move on the table to go along with the officer's recommendation to refuse this. I will call names out in the normal order as I normally do. Please say for if you are agreeing with the move and against if you are not. So, Councillor Barron. Against. Councillor Borthwick. 
Councillor Bull? Against. Councillor Davies? For. Councillor Hall? For. Councillor Hilliard? For. Uh, Councillor O'Neill? For. Councillor Rice? Against. Councillor Brook? Councillor Brook, you are not voting. Councillor Pedivin? Thank you very much. So could I have the numbers? Yeah, sorry, <laughs> Councillor Johnson. I suppose I better let him have a vote. <laughs> Councillor Johnson. Full. And um, myself, Councillor Kelsey, also for. Can we get the numbers, please? Thanks. So that's eight votes in favour of the move to refuse and three against. Therefore, that application is refused in line with the officer's recommendation. I thank very much the applicants for coming along and also the Councillor Brooke for speaking as Ward Councillor. We will move on with this morning's agenda and we will go to item 6C on the agenda. And I would ask for Mr Hodges to present your case, please, Mr Hodges. Just hang on while Councillor Brooke takes his seat and Councillor Barron leaves his. <laughs> OK. Thank you very much, Mr Hodges. Thank you, Chair. Can I just check you're seeing the PowerPoint, please? We are, thank you. Excellent, thank you. Um, so this is an application at 28 Harbourview Road in Poole for a loft conversion uh, to the side of the property. Um, the uh, Harbourview Road runs between Constitution Hill uh, to the north here and North Road to the south, uh, just below the uh, Constitution Hill and Seaview viewpoint. Um, properties uh, in the street mainly appear to be made out um, in 1920s, 1930s, and are all sort of individual bespoke designs. Um, so there isn't a consistent uh, appearance and design of properties. Um, and there is some examples of uh, more recent um, uh, remodelling and infilling uh, with more contemporary designs. So you see the property here um, uh, in a run of uh, a few few properties all sat on a similar frontage uh, just for the junction with Harbourview close. And here's an aerial view of the dwelling here. Um, so the proposal is for dormant on the side elevation. You'll see in a minute that uh, there is already uh, a loft conversion within the property um, and um, uh, the dormer is just to serve a stairwell to go into that. So this is existing dwelling. It was extended some time uh, a few years back with two-storey extension on the side here. Um, just one thing to draw your attention to is just the existing roof lights within the property. So these are all existing and there's no additional roof lights proposed. So uh, this is the scheme, uh, add a dormer on the side, um, one side facing window, this is above the stairwell, um, and this is shown for obscure glazing, um, and is indicated as in plain tile hanging to match the main roof. Um, so this existing floor plan, you see there's already a loft room here, and just again, just to highlight this issue that these roof lights are already in the building itself as, at the moment. Um, and so this is the revised floor plan. So it creates a dwelling, uh, a dwelling. It creates a bedroom up at, at the top uh, with a uh, an ensuite, and it ineffectively provides a head height to get the uh, stairwell up, which is a requirement for build, typically a requirement for building regs. And um, so views of the property. So this is the house here. The dormer will be erected on this side elevation here. Um, and this is just looking back up to the neighbor at number 30, um, where the uh, obscure glazed window will face towards this largely blank side elevation at number 30. Um, and just a couple of extra properties in the vicinity. Um, as the report notes, uh, dormers are a fairly common um, feature in the street. Um, and you will see them because of the range of views, uh, types and designs of properties and their scales ranging between two to two and a half uh, stories. Um, the dormers are a fairly common feature. Um, so, Chairman, um, we've not, not identified any harm with the proposals. Um, we feel it's in keeping with the design form and character uh, of the property and of the street scene more generally. Um, as you see, there's an obscure glazed window to maintain privacy. We don't feel the uh, extension that has an overbearing or overly dominant effect on any uh, adjoining properties. And we recommend the application for approval to you. 
Thank you, Mr. Hodges. Jill. Thank you, Chairman. I have a written statement of objection from Richard Lanoy of 32 Harbour View Road, Paul Dorset, BH 14 OPE. We write to object to the applicant's resubmitted plans on 15.09.22, which have still not addressed our planning concerns submitted on 09.07.22 and overall lack transparency. We would please like the Council to address the following six planning considerations, requesting supporting evidence from the applicant, as neither comment or evidence has been thus far forthcoming. One, no square meterage has been given. The plans remain vague. Two, no 3D modelling to show height, scale and bulk. Three, no evidence that the height will not exceed the existing roofline and footprint as no dimensions were given. Four, we object, object on grounds of loss of light and loss of privacy in our garden by this overdevelopment of site. We will be directly overlooked into our garden by both the proposed dormer and loft conversion on the north facing side. Instead of the elevation proposed for what appears to be for a seventh bedroom en suite, we, we requested the applicant installs a velux window within the existing side roof elevation to the north side. <coughs> this would be in addition to the already existing six bedrooms, five bathrooms, including an annex, a property already extensively developed following previous <coughs> granted permission. Five. A side-facing dormer is out of character with all other properties in Harbour View Road, particularly with the style of the applicant's 1930s property, where similar houses of the ilk in the road have no side dormers, giving no precedent in Harbour View Road to have a side-facing dormer. Six, please can the council verify and confirm the integrity of the applicant's plans, that in the council's view, the plans are safe, legal and lawful, and the council can verify that the applicant's representative, Tip Top Plans LLP, company number OC442005, incorporated on the 21st of April 2022, are a registered architect with the Architects Registration Board. Thank you. Uh, there are no speakers registered in <coughs> support. Thank you very much, Joe. In that case, Councillor Barron, would you like to speak on this one? No? Okay. Thank you very much. In that case, we'll go straight to Mr Hodges. Mr Hodges, would you like to comment on some of the um, reasons for the objection, please? You're muted, Mr Hodges. Apologies, Chairman. Uh, yes, the um, uh, it's a validation requirement, so it's a standard for all applications that app, uh, the plans are to scale. Um, and therefore, we are always considering uh, plans that are scaled and can be measured um, and where we can then show what the dimensions are. Um, if, uh, if a third party is unclear on the dimensions of a property, actually the Council's own website has a measuring tool um, which is actually uh, very good. It's, it's as good as the one we use internally. So it's possible to make those measurements. And um, in this case, we're completely satisfied with the both the uh, accuracy and um, uh, of the plans and that they are clear and that members can be confident in making decision on the basis of their of their clarity. Um, and, and just as a final point, um, uh, we're considering the application on its merits, not who drew the plans, I think is a short answer, Chairman. Thank you very much. Could you just uh, clarify a couple of the other points that were there on the evidence on the height, loss of light and the side facing dormer? Just the so members are clear about that, please. Yes, yes. So hopefully you're still seeing the presentation and um, you can see if you look at the uh, west elevation top left, uh, the ridge of the uh, dormer sits below the ridge of the main roof. Uh, and it's 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 hopefully reasonably clear in that view. So um, we can be clear that we're considering a side facing dormer that sits below the ridge of the main uh, main roof. Um, in terms of that uh, bulk, additional bulk, that's uh, for us is fairly limited in terms of its impact to neighbours. Um, it will sit just in this area here. It's very much sits against the side elevation of the neighbour at number thirty uh, here. I believe the representations actually from number 32, which is a property 
and um, further on um, north up of uh, uh, Harbourview Road, so is even more distant from uh, the site in this instance. So um, due to the fairly limited bulk and scale, we're satisfied that wouldn't result in a, an unacceptable harm to not a light outlook um, or any of those aspects, Chen. Thank you very much, Mr. Hodges. So over to members. Would anyone like to comment? Councillor O'Neill, followed by Councillor Lepedeman, please. Uh, thank you. Yeah, it's more of a question uh, for Mr. Hodges. Um, you gave several examples of other dormers in the area that were decently scaled in line with their roofs. Uh, in fact, they were quite considered and modest. This dormer is significant. Uh, can you give some rationale for the reason for that, other than just acquiring as much space as possible within the loft area? Thank you. Um, Chairman, I'm assuming, if you look at, um, if I take you through this, so existingly there's a there's a loft room at the moment, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, uh, Councillor O'Neill's correct, the purpose for doing that is to provide additional head height. Um, there would also be a requirement under building regs in terms of uh, the stairwell coming up here, as my understanding is, you have to have a constant head height of two metres up at the floor level, um, which is typically why with a lot of loft conversions that we see, it's necessary to put a dormer onto the side to, in effect, get the stairwell up uh, into the loft room. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, clearly the purpose of the dormer is to provide additional head height within the room. If you if you look at um, uh, this, the red dotted line shows the where the hip of the roof goes currently. And within that existing loft room, you could expect it to be restricted in height and um, have a lot of sloping ceilings. And then the dormer allows you to have a larger area, which is under this, this red dot, hopefully you see this red dotted line, uh, which is actually kind of a full uh, typical head height so that that's more of a usable room. Hope that makes sense. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, the way I, the way I think you're explaining is it's not just the additional head height, but the head height gives the uh, advantage of substantial, uh, more substantial usable space. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Pedman, please. Thank you. My, mine's also a question. Um, confirm me that we're only talking about the addition of a dormer, the principle of the loft conversion is not an issue for us. Am I, am I correct in that? Mr Hodges? Um, yes, yeah, that's absolutely correct. Um, uh, the, I mean, the dormer needs planning permission um, and you, you need to consider it on its merits, but um, in terms of uh, actually use, utilising the upper space, um, that's not something we're against in any shape or form and and you'll see from the photos that we've shown that uh, properties with sort of in effect second floors in the roof space are, are, are apparent within the street. That doesn't quite answer the question. Mr Hodges says the 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 conversion of the loft is not an issue for them. I'm, I'm saying could the owners of the property do that without putting the dormer in? I mean under planning terms would it, would it have to come to this committee just to convert the loft if it's only the dormer that's the issue as far as, uh, in planning terms? Not not whether it's acceptable to, to planning officers, but yeah, the conversion the, the, would not come to this the committee. The conversion of the loft is fine. They can yeah. do that anyway. Yes, the addition they don't of the need to get permission to for that. They can do it anyway. Habitable yeah. Because obviously it needs to be yeah. Yeah. two metres. So, so it's only the dormer yeah. we're looking at. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments from any other members? Councillor Hilliard, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, so David, your, your paragraph 13 says about uh, permitted developments. So what could actually be put on under permitted developments? Something bigger or the same? Thank you. Yes, um, um, I think in terms of permitted development, um, we're not we're not satisfied um, that there is a fallback to do the works as as permitted development, principally because a two storey extension has already been added. That's this um, element on the right hand side of the west elevation. So um, potentially that's removed all of the volume that the original roof could be extended by uh, without getting into too much technical detail. This is why we've not laboured the point that there's a fallback position because we don't think there is a fallback position and uh, permitted development in effect to build the dormer. 
Um, so um, it's under your control and, and it's to be considered on its merits. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I think the big thing for me here is that the window on the dormer uh, and it serves a staircase and is obscure glazed and is facing a blank facade of the property next door. So there isn't, going, you know, the, the objective talks about the overlooking into the gardens. So there, there isn't going to be any because you simply can't look out of that, look out of that window and it serves a staircase. So I see no, no planning reason to, to refuse this, Chairman. Okay, Councillor Johnson, any further comments or we can go to a move to grant on this one. I'm quite happy to make a move to grant. I, again, I, I see no reason to say no to this. It is only the the dormer that we're particularly looking at here and with the obscure glazing in it, I think that does counteract any overlooking problems that this may cause. So I'm happy to move the officer's recommendation on that. Councillor Borswick. Thank you very much, Councillor Borswick. Are there any further comments from members with regards to this one? No. In that case, members, we will again go to the vote as normal. Um, Councillor Borthwick? Four. Councillor Bull? Four. Councillor Davies? Four. Councillor Hall? Four. Councillor Hilliard? Four. Councillor O'Neill? Four. Uh, Councillor Rice? Four. Uh, Councillor Brooke? Four. Uh, Councillor Lepedevin? Four. Councillor Johnson? Four. And myself, Councillor Kelsey, also for. I think that makes that unanimous deal. Therefore, that application is granted in line with the officer's recommendations. Thank you very much for the presentation, Mr Hodges. So moving on, ladies and gentlemen, to item 6D, which is 19 nude gardens in Christchurch. And I would ask if we could have the presentation, please. And I'm sorry, but I'm going to ask you to pronounce your name because I nearly mucked it up then. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. It's uh, Mubukwani, so it's pronounced as um, it's uh, written. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Right, I shall share my screen. Right, just to confirm, are you able to see the screen, Chair? We are, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, so the application is at uh, 19 Mute Gardens in uh, Christchurch. Uh, the proposal seeks to demolish the existing conservatory and um, erect a single story rear extension with balcony above. Right, um, that's, uh, that's basically the uh, current site layout. Um, showing the current extent of uh, the dwelling, which uh, consists of a well, it's a two-story dwelling at uh, the end of a terrace. Um, right there to the rear is um, River Mude, and uh, highlighted in yellow is uh, Muddyford Keys Conservation Area. Um, so this is the uh, proposed uh, site plan, which shows uh, the extent of the uh, proposed uh, single-story rear element, uh, which would uh, be about to extend from the rear wall, uh, which is from that point to there by um, 3.7 meters, and um, the outline of the uh, proposed uh, balcony with a depth of uh, 1.8 meters. On, on your left is the um, existing uh, floor plans. We just chose the existing um, conservatory there uh, with the f existing uh, flat roof and will therefore then be proposed to be extended, as I said, by uh, 3.7 meters from that point all the way to the uh, rear uh, with the balcony above extending 1.8 meters. So that's, that's the current... Uh, existing uh, elevations of the dwelling, just showing uh, the uh, conservatory. Um, so as proposed, um, the, both uh, either sides of the uh, uh, balcony will uh, consist of a 1.8 meter high um, obscure glazed uh, screening, uh, on which, which can be seen there and there and on either side. Right, this is a photograph of the uh, dwelling uh, 
the rear of the dwelling as existing. Uh, to the right is uh, number 21 uh, Mude Gardens, so that just shows that relationship with them. Um, there are no major concerns in uh, respect of uh, overlooking as uh, the uh, obscure glaze will protect that. And to your left is uh, number 17 uh, Mude Garden. Which uh, well, which which uh, has the same uh, building, uh, rear building line as the application site. That's just another shot uh, showing number twenty one um, and uh, the uh, application dwelling. Uh, that's a more clear uh, view of the rear of number seventeen. Um, again, there will be that uh, proposed obscure glazed um, uh, glass there, which. Uh, will protect uh, overlooking into uh, primary accommodation of this neighbor. This is uh, a view of the rear of the terraces, just showing uh, different forms of uh, development uh, within that area. Um, this is the uh, number one uh, Mute Gardens, which is uh, at the very beginning of the terrace, uh, that just shows the uh, existing uh, site conservatory. And more importantly, there's, um, uh, sorry, uh, balcony. And more importantly, there's that rear balcony. I think uh, one of the issues uh, raised was uh, the fact that uh, this uh, application would set precedence in introducing um, a balcony. But as we can cl uh, clearly see, uh, a balcony does exist, and uh, the report also refers to uh, number five uh, mute gardens. Uh, basically, that has a planning uh, permission which was granted for well, alterations to the front of the dwelling, uh, which also included a single story rear extension with balcony above. Uh, but following a site visit, it's evident that uh, the uh, uh, rear extension and balcony have not actually been constructed. That said, because the permission is extant, uh, therefore that can still be built in future by either the current or future occupiers. So um, I, in my conclusion, um, uh, the proposed development is considered to have um, acceptable impacts on the character and appearance of the area and um, including uh, the setting of uh, Muddyford Key Conservation Area. Uh, the proposals are considered to respect uh, living conditions and preserve the privacy of neighboring property. It is not considered that the proposed uh, the proposals would uh, have uh, adverse impacts by way of uh, loss of light, uh, loss of outlook, or overbearing impact, um, and will not impact on uh, existing uh, parking provisions on the sites. No. Uh, highways safety and for for these reasons uh, the application is uh, recommended for approval subject to conditions as set out in my report thank you very much yeah thank you very much just to, um i respect the, are we are you okay if we call you willie <laughs> definitely that's fine chair thank you that's fine thank you very much just hate to disrespect anyone's name on this one and get it wrong so over to you Jill. So dealing with objections first, there is a written statement of objection from James Atkins on behalf of Alex Atkins, Veronica Atkins and James Atkins. Chairman, councillors, we seek a refusal of the planning application for 19 Mude Gardens Christchurch for the following reasons. There are inconsistencies between the plans, the planning statement and the officer's report. Page six of the applicant's planning statement clearly states that the application is to extend the existing sunroom by a specific 3.5 bricks plus mortar, a total of 790 millimetres, yet the plans in the officer's report refer to an extension of 1,250 millimetres. We have no objection to 790 millimetres, but an additional 1,250 millimetres is excessive in the location. The proposed balcony within the application is stated to be 1.8 metres deep by the full width of the property, approximately 6 metres. The application clearly states that it is not for social interaction. What, therefore, is the purpose? It intrudes on the privacy of our rear garden at all times and may adversely affect the quiet use of the immediately adjacent first floor bedrooms if used at night. Can the planning officer please display to the committee the drawing submitted within page two of the letter of objection on behalf of Mr Atkins by Daryl Howells, 
planning consultant of DHPC, which clearly demonstrates the adverse effect to our living. As neighbours, we would support the renewal of the existing poor sunroom with a new construction up to 790 millimetres longer, but would urge the planning committee to refuse this application on the grounds of inconsistency of size within the application submissions, which means there is no defined size for approval and refuse the addition of a 1.8 metre by 6 metre balcony immediately on our boundary and adjacent to bedroom windows. The applicant could then apply for permission to construct a new extension, single storey with no balcony, with a new build up to 790 millimetres deeper than the existing sunroom in accordance with the application statement, which would receive our support. In support of the application, the applicant is online, uh, Mr David Burrows. Uh, Mr Burrows, if you'd like to put your camera on and unmute your microphone and you have up to five minutes, then we're ready. Um, thank you very much and thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak today. Um, can I just have a quick thumbs up to check that you can hear me okay? Yeah, we can, thank you. Lovely, thank you very much. Um, so, um, Welly has kindly outlined the existing site and provided some photos, which I think will be very helpful in putting this into context. The existing sunroom that we have um, on the side of the house was built in possibly the 60s or 70s. Um, it's just under the um, depth um, where it would have been at the current kind of light like time as permitted um, development. It runs a little bit underneath that and runs a full width for the property. As it stands at the moment, it's cold and it's drafty. The patio doors rattle around and the roof above it's made of that kind of green glass that you might be familiar with from kind of like school in the 1980s with the wires underneath it. Um, the proposal is therefore to knock down the existing sunroom and replace that with a modern uh, building that complies with the building codes and is safe um, and is warm. Um, in terms of the size, um, I would observe, and again the photos that Welly shared demonstrate this, that looking at the road, and it's visible on Google Maps as well, that there's nine houses on this side of the road, six of them have got an extension, and in at least one case, the extension is substantially deeper than what I'm looking at today. You know, but in, again, it's kind of like visible um, on Google Maps. I believe that kind of like what's caused um, the most um, comment um, in the um, uh, objections that have been received um, is the balcony. Um, as Welly pointed out, there is already an existing balcony on number one and planning saying was given um, for number five on the same basis. Um, I would also I'd wish to observe to the committee um, that um, while I've lived in number 19 Mead Gardens with the family for four years, I previously lived at number three, which was right next to number one. I'm very familiar with the balcony that was there I'm also very familiar with the plans that were put in place in number five, and this was one of the things that appealed um, when moving into number 19 to look at a similar facility that could be put in place there. In terms of overlooking, when I lived at number three, I had absolutely no concerns with that um, whatsoever, and the simple reason for that is it's a terraced house. As I stand in my garden today at number 19 now and indeed at number three, I could see everybody else in the road's windows at the top. And when I look out my bedroom windows, I can currently see everybody else's garden. There is therefore no change in any way, shape or form in terms of overlooking. And indeed the privacy screens um, would provide some additional kind of protection um, in that regard. Um, on the photo shared of number one, you see that the, the um, screens on the balcony there are only kind of like waist height. Um, based on the um, pre-submission um, and discussion that, that we had um, with the council, we'd initially looked at possibly having them that size, possibly having a bigger balcony. The size of the balcony has been substantially reduced based on the kind of like the pre kind of like planning feedback that we had and the privacy screens that we've done by design exactly the same or the same kind of like constraints that were put on those in terms of height um, that proffered. Um, or, or that were made a condition of the consent given for number five. Um, I would therefore suggest that the, the proposal that we've done has been you know, put to us and when putting our ideas forward for this, we literally looked at the other properties that are in the street and looked at how you know, our house could be done and could be improved to the standard and the appearance of other houses in the road. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Could you mute your microphone, please? 
Thank you. Um, we did have a call in by Councillor Deadman on this one. Unfortunately, Councillor Deadman has had to go off to the hospital for a pre-arranged appointment and therefore cannot be here to speak. But she has asked that, rather than her statement, if members can be minded of her reasons for the call in and use that as her reasons for, for her statement on this one today. So I'll come come back now to members. Any comments to make on or any questions to ask of Willie on this one? Councillor Hilliard. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Willie, obviously the comments from Councillor Deadman about the submitted plans potentially being inaccurate, and I think the objector also mentioned that. Uh, could you comment on that, please? Uh, yes, Councillor, thank you. Um, I think um, what, what's, what's caused uh, this discrepancy mainly is uh, the uh, design access statement, which referred to um, a number of bricks and mortar. So obviously that, that did not tally with uh, the, uh, the plan submitted. And subsequently, a uh, design access statement was amended to actually remove that reference. Um, in terms of uh, accuracy to the plans, um, Hopefully you can still see the screen. Um, right, so I've just done sort of, I've, I've made, I think the only the only dimension that I agree with uh, that previous plan which uh, was displayed is uh, the depth of the proposed um, extension. And I must emphasize that it's a demolition of uh, the existing and not extension to the existing uh, single element. Um, so um, I mean, I'm satisfied that the plans are, are as accurate as can be. I mean, they've been drawn by a professional architect. So I don't really see where the discrepancy in terms of the, the actual plans uh, stems from. Thank you. Okay, ju just picking on, up on the comments. So mm -hmm. what, what uh, Councillor Deadman and the objectors are saying is that the, the present conservatory is 240, uh, 2,450 2, centimetres uh whereas so that that's saying it's a relatively small conservatory whereas the actual plans are saying it is 2915 so a lot bigger so but i think her question and the objective's question does that change your decision so uh in in agreeing or saying is it over development is, is it a minor uh discrepancy which you you can live with thank you thank you um i mean that that doesn't alter my uh, my decision at all i think in terms in terms of measurements obviously we go by um the depth from uh, the rear wall of the existing dwelling I, I don't believe it's actually a substantial um, addition to that. Um, when, if you refer to permitted uh, development, um, in this instance, say just for the single story element, uh, it would allow up to three meters uh, depth. So that addition of uh, 0 0.7 from the three meters, I don't believe it's actually substantial to, uh, or to warrant a refusal in this instance. Thanks for the comment. Uh, Councillor O'Neill. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I was going to ask about the accuracy of the plans and the measurements, but I'm satisfied with the officer's answer. Um, I guess overall, we've got a development that some people like and some people don't like. That's not unusual. But I would comment as follows. The, the depth of the balcony at 1.8 metres is not significant. You're not going to have a very big party up there. You might get a couple of chairs and a table. Uh, and it will stand in a line across the width. Um, number 21, the property next door, is actually well protected from any overlooking, not just because it's set back, but because also it's got obscure, uh, obscure uh, glazed screen, uh, which actually is of some substance when it's noted on the position and its significance to the balcony size. Um, not, I assume it's next door, number 17. Um, again, there's an obscure uh, screen um, for the for similar reasons. Uh, it protects both parties. And actually, if you're looking out from the balcony with that obscure screen in the way, you're looking at the back end or the top end of somebody's rear garden. Um, that's hardly a significant threat. Um, therefore, uh, subject to any other debate, Chairman, I would move that we uh, endorse and accept the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor O'Neill. Any other thoughts, Councillor Barrett? 
Thank you, Chairman. To, to me, the, the, the issue is the, is, the, is the balcony. However, it has got opaque glass either side. And I just don't really understand, well, I just I don't really accept the, the, the risk of antisocial behaviour, ramifications. I, I, you know, if, if the applicant wants to end up holding a mirror and looking into someone's bedroom, I should think they call the police. Just can't really see that as, as, a, as, a, as a major thing. And people are extending their houses. They are, you know, making, making, them, making them better. And I would, I would second the move to, to, to approve. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Barron. I think I think you're absolutely right in part of that in that with the MPPF and the way that climate and everything is going now, actually extending existing properties is a, a betterment and keep building new ones everywhere and demolishing and rebuilding. I think um, we have to encourage some of our residents to continue to do this to enable their larger families to carry on living in their properties. Councillor Hall. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I'm just um, surprised that the inaccurate dimensions has really caused the um, objections really because of that people have gone on the dimensions that they're seeing on the plan and it isn't it's quite a big difference so you know it does seem that if the right di dimensions had been um, put in the place in the first place I don't think it has the objections you have so I'm a bit concerned on that. Thank you Councillor Hall. Uh, Councillor Hilliard. Thanks, Chair. Uh, as, as others have said, it, the balcony is the issue. And in a terrace, if you might be looking out your window, a bedroom window, glimpsing the other people's gardens, there is no perception from the other person in the garden that you're there. With an open balcony, they're going to hear noise and they're just going to have the perception and reality that people are going to be looking out of the balcony to potentially uh, close to three or five uh, gardens. So it might not be the near garden, but as we know, as, uh, personally, I use all the length of the garden for different things. And I, I just wouldn't want people looking over. So I just can't see the point of the balcony. So I would be against the move. Thank you, Councillor Leon. Any further comments from members? If not, we will move to the vote. We have a move to grant this one. Uh, sorry. sorry, Chair, if, if it is moving to grant, can. Can there be a uh, restriction on further extension of the uh, balcony? Because uh, I think that will probably come later. Thank you. Ms. Burns? Yep. 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 We can do that. We can remove any future permitted development rights for that property. Welly, would you be able to add that as a condition? Yes, Chair, I will add the condition removing permitted development rights. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, members? We will, Councillor Barron. We're just going to a bit more detail how restricted that would be. Would it mean they couldn't ever convert the loft? Would it mean how, how, no, how strict yeah. is that going going forward? I would imagine it would be purely the extension of the balcony. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so we have a move and by Councillor O'Neill, seconded by Councillor Barron, to grant this with the additional condition for the, the uh, permitted development rights to be removed on the balcony side of things. Councillor Barron. Ball. Councillor Borswick. Councillor Bull. Ball. Uh, Councillor Davies. Ball. Councillor Hall. Against. Councillor Hilliard. Against. Councillor O'Neill. Four. Councillor Rice. Four. Uh, Councillor Brook. Against. Councillor Lepedwin. Four. Councillor Johnson. Four. And myself, Councillor Kelsey, also for. Could I get the numbers, please? Jeff? Thank you, Chairman. So that's nine votes in favour of the move to grant and uh, three against. So therefore, that application is granted in line with the officer's recommendation, plus the extra condition asked for by Councillor Hilliard with the removal of permitted development rights. So thank you very much. Thank you for the applicant and the objectors. And also thank you very much to Willie. This is your first application to the planning board. So well done for yourself and well, boys, look forward to seeing you again. Members, that concludes today's applications. Uh, Jill, if we could end the meeting.